So um, thank you all for coming. I know there's so many choices uh, on this day. The SCA did really an, an exceptional job putting together a program this year as they do every year with so many different speakers and so many interesting topics. Um, my, the, the quick story about how I'm here presenting this particular topic is that a few months ago the SEA organized an event called the, the, the SEA Boot Campus, which was created for high school seniors to um, expand their horizons and prepare them for the college years uh, and how to get on college campuses and uh, be able to engage more effectively with uh, their, their cohorts who are coming from all over the world and may present them with challenges about their Judaism or about uh, their Zionism or about their, their broad uh, beliefs. And so they asked me to prepare something about, about how to engage in media and how to engage in social media. And Bobby reached out and said, you know, would you think about doing it again for, for the, the day of learning? And so the little twist is to connect it to the Shabbat Av, uh, just the idea that we, we hear about the story of Kamsa and Bar Kamsa and the two individuals who were at this party and were, um, who was invited, who wasn't invited, he sent the wrong invitation. It was all this, this spin out of information. If you imagine that happening today, and it was happening on TikTok or social media or on Twitter, and all this news goes out about this party that's happening, and everyone knows that they're there, and they're seeing who's there and who's not there, and it would have blown up tremendously. And the questions are, what was real? What wasn't real? What was fake news about what was happening that day? And what was actually going down between the, the host of that party and the people who were invited, who was supposed to be there, was not supposed to be there? And it ties into this message of how do we effectively digest information today that comes our way? And all of us, and especially those of the younger generation, are digesting information through their media platforms. And so today we're going to be talking about what what we what I deemed as the dark arts of media manipulation. How far people go in terms of, of um, trying to get you to uh, digest information. Now, unfortunately, some technical. Yeah. So, for the sake of time, right, you can perfect. go and type in climate change is. You're going to see different results depending on where you live. And the particular. So, just just as a quick preview, I'm going to show you a brief video of a movie called uh, The Social Dilemma, and it's going to highlight some of what we're going to talk about. The what we're up against here, how much goes into manipulating our facts and our knowledge base. And I, I imagine we're going to have a bunch of technical problems today, so just bear with that. When you go to Google and type in climate change is, you're going to see different results depending on where you live and the particular things that Google knows about your interests. That's not by accident, that's a design technique. What I want people to know is that everything they're doing online is being watched, is being tracked. Every single action you take is carefully monitored and recorded. A lot of people think Google's just a search box and Facebook's just a place to see what my friends are doing. What they don't realize is there's entire teams of engineers whose job is to use your psychology against you. The co inventor of the Facebook like button of the president of Pinterest. Google, Twitter, Instagram. There were meaningful changes happening around the world because of these platforms. I think we were naive about the flip side of that coin. We get rewarded by parts, likes, thumbs up, and we conflate that with value and we conflate it with truth. A whole generation is more anxious, more depressed. I always felt like fundamentally it was a force for good. I don't know if I feel that way anymore. Facebook discovered that they were able to affect real world behavior and emotions without ever triggering the user's awareness. They are completely clueless. Fake news spreads six times faster than truths. We're being bombarded with rumors. 
If everyone's entitled to their own facts, there's really no need for people to come together. In fact, there's really no need for people to interact. We have less control over who we are and what we really believe. If you want to control the population of your country, there has never been a tool as effective as Facebook. When you build these things, then we have a responsibility to change it. The intention could be, how do we make the world better? If technology creates mass chaos, loneliness, more polarization, more election hacking, more inability to focus on the real issues, we're toast. This is Checkmate on Humanity. Okay, so this is a movie on Netflix called The Social, uh, the social dilemma. I highly encourage you to check it out. It too is a slant. It too is a spin of the producers uh, of of their position. But as we'll talk about today, pulling information from multiple sources is how we can create an even playing field. So when we talk about, uh, especially for our young, for the young generation, our our teenagers today, they are digital natives. Some of us in this room did not grow up with technology, did not grow up with a cell phone in high school, did not grow up uh, tethered to a computer. But today's younger generation, they are digital natives. They grew up almost in their veins technology. And so um, even so, even with that degree of, of being uh, digital natives, they are not immune to the realities of social media and fake news and manipulation. And so, um, we have to get out and teach people how to counterbalance these powerful forces that David, uh, the, we got to give that, that rock, that stone, into the slingshot of David so that we can fight against this Goliath that is against uh, uh, our best interests. So what gets in the way of us being what, I, what we call conscious consumers, people who can more effectively understand what's going on in media? Well, first of all, we have to take into account that digital media is designed against us, and we'll talk about that in a moment, how it's done. And we don't have the skills. We barely are catching up with how to um, figure out how to use a new app or when it gets upgraded. Who's teaching us how to combat against it? Up until just a few years ago, no one. There was no one speaking against how to prepare ourselves for these, um, uh, these challenges. There's another uh, show on Netflix called Inventing Anna. Has anyone seen it? Okay, so the majority of you have seen this show. A brilliant show about a woman, an heiress, a la a alleged heiress to a, uh, a fortune, and how she goes about uh, manipulating New York real estate and New York socialites to get what she needs. And the, the catch line of that movie is as follows. This whole story is completely true, except for all of the parts that are totally made up. It's a brilliant line, right? And that's, that's the reality of what we're up against. It seems all true, except for everything that's not. So how does this idea of fake news, how does it even get to us? How are we being manipulated? So big tech, as that movie was pointing out, is trying to manipulate you through their algorithms. I actually have a, a, a fair amount of clients so side note, uh, side note, I'm a clinical psychologist and a professor of psychology. And in my, cl my clinical practice, I have a, a lot of clients from Google and Facebook and other big tech companies. And I talk behind the scenes with them about their jobs and about what they are paid to do, which is create algorithms, which are uh, mathematical formulas <laughs> that understand that every time you look at a particular page for more than two seconds or one second, that's data for them. Forget what you touch, like, or swipe. Just the sheer fact that you stay on an image or a video for more than X number of seconds is information that they send into their algorithm along with every other bit of information that you feed it without even knowing. And with all that algorithmic data, they are manipulating what you experience. People always wonder, how was it that my phone suddenly put an ad up for a new set of dishes, a new pot. How did it know that last week I was talking about the fact that I burnt my pot or needed something? But, well, that's part of their algorithm because you gave permission to your phone to listen in on you. And you gave it permission to do all sorts of things unknowingly because who reads the fine print, right? 
And so our attention is manipulated through these algorithms, through the fact that our emotions are a set of chemistries and, and neural pathways that actually create a, a reward every time we see something we like, we enjoy it. We get a, a neurotransmitter in our brain called dopamine, which is well known today for basically making you feel good and these individuals who create these programs know how to manipulate your dopamine levels. They know how to get a rise out of you. And through that manipulation, again, are creating content, are creating devices, are creating software and apps to basically make money for their bottom line, not for your interests. Another concept that I think I'm going to credit my brothers in the room, my brother Eli, because when, we when I was talking about this presentation, uh, Eli is a very avid user and, uh, of, of media and has an ability to understand what fake news is and, and how to do research on it. And I think it was you that talked to me about this idea of the, of the filter bubbles, the idea that you think when you're in a room talking to people, let's say, or reading emails or, or um, sharing on social media, you think you're engaging with people that may be a little bit different than you because they had slightly different opinion than you did, or you're reading news that was slightly a little bit off from what you may believe because they want to get a rise out of you. But in reality, the algorithm keeps you in a bubble. You're filtered into a bubble that is people just like you that you want to get all upset with each other and you want to get a rise out of each other and you want to yell about the same issue with each other, they're wrong. They have it off. What are they talking about, those Republicans? What are those Democrats saying? Those extreme liberals, those extreme whatever. Everyone's yelling and screaming from within their bubble, not realizing that you're not even speaking to the other side. You're speaking just to, to your small filtered bubble, these closed loops of like-minded people who echo each other in an echo chamber. And they basically strengthen your polarized views. And they create more energy of your emotional state. So these emotions that we talked about, um, we're going to show you a brief video about how these emotions operate. And in particular, what emotions do you think are, are the target of people who are creating media content? What emotions do you think they're trying to get at? Anger. 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 What other emotions? Anxiety. Anxiety, right? They want to, I'm anxious about something. I'm really worked up about something. Hi, David. Hi. Right? I'm really worked up. What other emotions are they trying to get at? Anger, anxiety? I guess fear, no? Fear. Top of the list. Oh, no. Something bad is going to happen, right? When we went through the whole COVID spike, how much fear was, was manipulated, right? And, of course, disgust. What's that? Polarization. And there's a polarization that occurs from anger and fear and anxiety and disgust. Those are the top emotions that are being manipulated mm -hmm. and utilized to draw you further in so that you will be engaged. Can I ask a question? Yes. The kids, okay, so fine. I agree with everything you're saying. I know, I know, I'm not, I'm not talking to my phone, I'm, I'm pretty decent. But the kids, so what do you, what, like, what do we do? We hope they show up for talks like this <laughs> and send them to boot campus and educate them. But the reality is, it is a very scary reality. And listen, it, I, I don't, I don't think any of us are immune. And even, even, even you who may not use it as much, there is still a degree to which we are being pulled in, right? Um, God bless my mother who is here. My mother, Frida, is very famous for sending her forward messages, right? And some of them are beautiful, and they are inspiring, and they give you a sense of, of like hope. But sometimes sneaks in a message of forward this to 29 people, and if you don't send it to 29 people, as the message might say, X, Y, and Z won't, you know, will go wrong in the world. And you're like, what? How, how can we forwarding an email to 29 people affect the world? Right? In a doomsday scenario where I'm going to get, you know, hacked or something. But we get manipulated, all of us. And the, and the younger generation, 100%, we have ourselves a major challenge. Now, Valerie, that's why we're here 
doing the best we can to give some information over them, right? I know I'm going to end up up against time, so I'm not going to show you this video, which essentially shows how these emotions that we talked about are essential for these software companies and for these algorithms that are created to pull us in. Okay. So we're going to go with some images. My apologies, there was a miscommunication about the size of screen that we needed for this particular <laughs> talk, so it may be a little small, but I'll explain nonetheless what's, what, what's being shown here. So this is an image that came around the news a few years ago. And the caption on this image, which is basically of the Western Wall, okay, and a fire by the Western Wall, and a bunch of, of Yehudim, Jewish people, celebrating and dancing at the wall by the fire. And the caption, clean, the caption said something to the effect of, Jews dance as Al-Aqsa burns. That was the caption that got beamed all over on every news feed and every channel, whether it be Twitter or whatnot, this was the, the caption. Of course, what emotions are there? Hey. Anger, disgust, right? Uh, so, so deep emotions. But this was a false and misleading claim. In reality, the fire was of a tree. There was a tree on fire. And it happened to be that the way the picture was taken showed <laughs> that it, it was above the wall and so it seemed like maybe there was a fire at the Al-Aqsa Mosque, but there, there really was just a tree on fire. And the celebration was, I think it was Yom Ma'ud. And coincidentally, there was Yom Ma'ud celebration happening. Or Yom Yerushalayim. False misleading claim. Um, there's all sorts of claims that are going on around um, the, the, the Jew, this title says the Jew mongers for conflict, that it is the Jewish nation that is causing conflict between Ukraine and Russia. That it is, it was the, the Jewish nation that's at the foot of all this, okay? These are conspiracy theories. I mean, we've heard many, over the many, many years, the conspiracy theory is nothing new. But today, they get hyped up. Uh, during the, the, the height of uh, the pandemic, there was this news story that went around that was published in the Post that said, Viral vaccine bandits, TikTok warning is fake. So th there was a there was a story on TikTok that someone was running around and he would go to people and say, are you vaccinated? And if the person said no, they would take out a needle and jab them in the arm. Oh, oh. And then they would toss a, a vaccine card at them and said, now you are. Huh. That was a story that went viral. The New York Post covered it. It was covered in many news outlets, but it was it was actually a fake story. It was a, a, a group of comedians who created this story just to get a rise and have a you know, humorous story out of the news. It was as if it was a Saturday Night Live skit that they were doing. But it was picked up as if it was real news and put out there. It wasn't real. Six million people, though, saw this as real news and forwarded it to many other people and propagated this story. And again, in today's day and age, with the media and the power of media that we have today, these things can happen. 1980, if a story happened that was, you know, in 1990 and 2000, a story that happened that was not accurate, how fast could it spread? How many people would hear about it? Probably a small group in that local community. And in this community, maybe we were very good at spreading news fast because we are a, 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 a beehive, but we're unique in that way. Most places around the world aren't set up the way we were to spread news fast. But today, there are no walls, there are no boundaries. News spreads fast. Okay. Um, I'm going to skip forward for some, for some of these. Anyone have any other examples of media manipulation or a fake news story that, that spread out and got around fast? Yeah? There was something like a comedian was at like a, a, a festival or something, and he made up a story that all birds are drones. And he was a comedian, okay. he made up a whole right. like stick of it and it right. got viral and then it got picked up that it was true that birds are drones and that they're really not, they're like they're, it's either China or whatever, right. the government watching us from the sky and it really like snowballed into a whole real story and right. it's totally just a joke that got taken seriously. Amazing, yeah. amazing, right, yes. Or in the news recently, this whole Alex Jones case is kind of uh, yeah. coming down. Yes. So, I mean, hopefully this will be the start of the correction. Right. 
you know what, maybe some of these yo-yos will start to, uh, you know, use right. our platforms a little bit more. Right, responsibly, right. All these doomsday, how many, how, every couple of years we have the doomsday uh, announcements, right? The end of the world is coming, it's happening, and everyone gets in a flurry, and, and they, do, they do ridiculous, irrational things in preparation for it, and then, you know, the, the day comes, and the minute comes, and 12.59 passes, and wah, 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 nothing happens. Right, um, so we have to really be aware that that it can happen easily. So this is a this is a powerful one. Okay, let's see if, if uh, I can show this video. The Russian invasion of Ukraine is 100% real and incredibly devastating to watch. But sadly, not all of the images or videos you see are completely accurate or legitimate. When news breaks quickly, we often turn to images and video to try to understand what's happening. That can be very helpful to see places and events where journalists can't go. But it also raises the chance you can fall for mis- or disinformation. It's time for the Truth of Meter Minute. Since Russia invaded Ukraine on February 24th, we at PolitiFact have seen hundreds of images and videos showing what's unfolding nearly 5,000 miles away. Some posts are completely accurate. Others take an old image or video and attach it to the current crisis in Ukraine. Like this video, which claimed to show a Russian attack in Ukraine. In reality, it was a 2015 explosion in China. Sadly, we've debunked dozens of images like this. And we've seen similar misinformation spreading in all types of breaking news events. But we're also seeing something different this time. Russia's invasion into Ukraine has fueled a surge of false and misleading content specifically happening on TikTok. Why? Because TikTok makes it very easy to use and share audio. And audio is being manipulated to spread fake wartime footage purportedly shot in Ukraine. Want to see what we mean? Watch this. So, just for the sake of time, I'm going to summarize what, what the rest of this is going to show. They show videos of gunfire and battle scene. Meanwhile, the gunfire was a recorded audio from, you know, just a, a file that they have of, of, of wartime. And they overlay it over this footage just to make it more intense for people. There's a video that they show um, where... I'll show it in a, in a little bit. I may not show the whole video, but of a, uh, a, a group of body bags, body bags, I don't know if anyone saw this, and then in the back, and there's a news reporter with his, he has a face mask on, so he's speaking, and then there are, uh, he's speaking, it sounds like he's in English, right? And all of a sudden, one of the body bags unzips, and someone like gets up and walks out of the body bag. <laughs> and it exploded all over. What was the story out was fake there? The Russians or the Ukrainians are trying to fake that. The deaths that were there in Ukraine. Meanwhile, the story was from five years ago, many years back. It was not even in English. The guy was speaking in, in Uzbekistan. They dubbed over in English. They completely manipulated the story to make it seem like there was a, a, um, a, a problem happening in Ukraine where they were manipulating facts. Completely made up. But this story got 12 mil million views. Okay. Yes, Dave. When you say they, do you mean the government or who? It's people who made up the video. Well, yeah, I mean, so there is definitely a source of that made up that video. I don't know. Uh, there is, you can find that out. We have the knowledge of who made that video, which uh, that particular one. But other ones we don't always know. We don't always know who makes it up. The person who posted on their media feed, you might presume made it, but maybe he got it from somewhere else. I mean, it's, it's hard to track. Of, a lot of effort and energy and research to put these together. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Some of it is state-run propaganda. Right. right. It could be. It depends on where we're talking about. A place like Russia, I wouldn't be surprised if it's state-run propaganda. A place like China, a place like America, is America putting forward? Yeah, possibly. Right? And that's the scary thing is that it's come from all over. So what is the answer? How do we help people with social media literacy? Okay. Um, so again, we're not gonna be able to go into the full scope of this, but I wanna just explain some of the highlights here. So when we talk about media literacy, we're talking about the ability to access, analyze, evaluate, create, and act using all forms of communication. That's what media literacy is. My ability to work with the media to be a, an engaging citizen. 
social media literacy is essentially when I'm using my different types of media and messages across social media platforms and I want to try to do so objectively with the goal to find out or at least to analyze what is being presented to me. How can I know if this is close to fact, close to total propaganda? Is this uh, uh, just a fake story? Is it, what is going on? How do I learn and how do I apply techniques? As Valerie said, especially for our younger generation, how can we teach these techniques when they're spending countless hours digesting their world through their phones or devices, okay? Um, so this is a quote from Harry Potter. Again, I presented this to a younger audience. It was very relevant, but maybe people might appreciate this. Um, this is uh, Professor uh, Severus Snape once said, the dark arts are many, varied, and ever-changing and eternal. Fighting them is like fighting a many-headed monster. With each time a neck is severed, which each time a neck is severed, sprouts another head even fiercer and cleverer than before. You are fighting that which is unfixed, mutating, indestructible. Your defenses must therefore be as flexible and inventive as the arts you seek to undo. I love this quote, and I think it applies to what we're up against here. This is a multi-headed beast. And the minute you chop one head off, 10 others are gonna pop up. And so we really need to be flexible in our ability to combat this and invent it. So this I go into a whole uh, uh, kind of comments about what real news is versus what fake news is. So real news, what, how do we know what real news is? What's real news? CNN. Why? What makes CNN, <laughs> no, what makes, what makes CNN or Fox News or any other news channel, what makes it real or fake? What it's gives to have something an editorial? They're supposed to have editorial over. What does it mean, editorial oversight? oversight. What does they're that mean? supposed to have multiple sources. They have to have credible sources. They can't right. just so say what they want. They can't just go up and say, this is our, this is our unless they say openly, right. our opinion right. is this. Mm -hmm. That's not news. That's an opinion piece. Editorial. That's an editorial, right? which you read any newspaper, that the editorial section, it's always gonna be more slanted in a direction, but that's not news, okay? A reputable news source is supposed to have editorial boards that check the facts. And if they make a mistake, they come back the next day and say, we checked and we misspoke and we printed the wrong information and that's why the New York Times and any other, they'll have that correction section, we, we misspoke because they have editorial boards going over it. That is real news, okay? Uh, and even real news, of course, has its limitations. Everything, everything is subject to a skew. Even a CNN or Fox or New York Times or Wall Street Journal, they all have their skew, Washington Post, okay? Um, and um, we are supposed to know and trust the source that they are doing their homework. Fake news, on the other hand, is, can be a form of misinformation, highly distorted, intended to manipulate and mislead. It leaves out fact, it chooses what to present to you and only one side of the story is presented, and it may alter or put things out of context, okay, in order to manipulate the information. Of course, it can be used as propaganda and manipulated, and at times, it can be abused to manipulate the audience away from the agenda, okay? This was the, uh, this was the story I was telling you about with the uh, body bags. This is uh, Zelensky. Um, there was a, uh, someone who was able to take him speaking and put a fake head, speaking words that were not his words, but he get, came up and spoke as if it was him, but it was completely manipulated. I'll show this one just for them. Deep fakes are gonna be like Yeah. Is deploying a new weapon in the war on Ukraine. Deep fake videos. I still trust this one purports to show Ukraine's heroic President Zelensky supposedly telling his soldiers to surrender and give up your arms. But no one was fooled by such an obvious fake. Here it is side by side with the real Zelensky, who's been praised around the world for his bold leadership and refusal to abandon Kyiv. 
Sam Gregory is an expert on deep fakes. The man's body doesn't look like Zelensky, his neck doesn't look like Zelensky, his voice doesn't sound like Zelensky, and his face is just looks kind of off. But these kinds of deepfakes can fool people. President Zelensky responded quickly to the deepfake video, telling his people there will be no surrender. The only ones who should give up arms are Russian soldiers. Okay, so again, I, to be honest, when I first saw this video, I wasn't able to, I didn't quickly, my brain didn't say, look out for a problem. I, I just was in a little bit of like surprise. Oh wow, he really is saying surrender? And then only a little bit later, you know, checking, wait, fact check, right? Let me go on and, and search for this. Did, they, did, did Zelensky just say to surrender? And you'll see 10 other uh, uh, results on a news feed. Maybe go to the second page, not always the first page of Google or any other search engine. Go to the second page and get even more information. You'll see that it was, that it was totally not corroborated. Yeah. Uh, so I think in the schools they have to update what Lashon Hara is. It is fake news. It's right. an ancient. It's an ancient uh, way of way of speaking. But now that's that's what it is. Right. Lashon, Lashon Hara. Hara. Right. You fake news. You gotta be able to filter out what someone's telling you. Which is which goes back to the opening statement of Kamsa Bar Kamsa and the whole uh, you know things that got rattled. What was real? What was not real? What was Lashon Hara? What was against? Right, so hard to know, uh, but we need to educate about this. All right, so misinformation, I'm not gonna go to those, is those, okay. So um, in brief, I created with my team, we, we, we really scratched our heads when, when the SCA reached out to us and said, can you speak about this? We did research and we found that there's not a whole lot yet out there. There, there are people that are putting efforts to try to teach, but it's not like front, front of, 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 of the page. So this is, we're in the early stages of trying to figure out how to help educate people about this. So we came up with our own strategy called the A to G strategy. Right, so we liked it. Okay, so uh, we went over uh, several areas, authorship, understanding who's behind the message, biases, trying to break down what is going on in this message. Is there a bias? Is there a slant in this message? How do I really take a step back and zoom out to see what am I being, what, what's the slant here? Uh, is the content credible, right? Where is it coming from? As David said before, how do I know the source of this video? Who created this information? Who is it targeting? Is it really going after just a small group of people to get them riled up, right? I mean, the, the, the um, January 6th uh, 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 event, you can do a whole, um, there are already entire uh, dissertations on what went on that day. What was manipulated here? Who was targeted? What was the biased messaging? Who authored it? Was the content credible? And we have the big problem of the question of, was the head of state even you know, uh, um, implicated in that, right? Because that would seem credible, right? If the, the leader of the country is saying, well, I'm not against it, right? So how do we know and how do we learn how to battle against these concepts? Um, and to be aware of our emotions, so that our emotions that are being pulled, how do I be aware not to click right away? Just because something is like, oh my God, I can't believe I just got this in my inbox. Let me forward it to 50 other people because I'm, I'm worked up. Maybe I need to take a breath. Maybe I need to take a moment away. Maybe I need to do a, a little bit of research and double check this before we forward it. I'm, I'm in a group with, with my brother Eli uh, with a bunch of friends of ours, and all the time someone will post something, and the first thing when it goes up, someone will say, fact check, is this true? And one of the other members of the chat will go and do a little bit of research, and come back and say, this was not true. I did the research, you know, the first guy who posted it didn't have the patience or the time to do it, because he just quickly shot it out, but usually we are, we've become in this group aware to say, I'm posting this, because I want to discuss it with you guys, but of course, let's first check the facts. How many of you are doing that in your chats? Zero. How many people in their family chats, when you post something to your family chat, are saying, I'm posting this, but I, I can't verify it? Fact check? That's a healthy procedure to make sure we're protected against these, these potentials. And then, of course, we don't want to get stuck in these bubbles that we talked about before, where we're only talking to the same people who believe what we believe. We have to go beyond that and get and get into other arenas. Uh, okay, so I think I'm at the edge of time. Uh, so I know this is just an overview and just the beginning. There are 
you know, 20 other slides that I have that go into details of this, but for the purposes of this conversation, uh, I'll, let me just fast forward. Oh, this is a great one. This is a great one. The slap heard around the world, right? When, uh, when, um, uh, Will Smith, right, hit Chris Rock. So right after that happened, the news erupted. Everyone's face watching the slap. This is a, a photo of what was presented as everybody's <laughs> face watching the slap, and Nicole Kidman in particular reacted to the Chris Rock and Will Smith incident at the Oscars. Oh my gosh. No, not true. Or is it? No, this photo was taken from th several years before when the film Moonlight won, and that was the reaction of the crowd from Moonlight. But the person who created that meme grabbed this photo from years before, took it, and added uh, Matt Damon and, 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 and The Rock and... and, and uh, so how would you know? Got to go in and, 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 and search. Uh, video, uh, picture of Oscar reaction to Chris Rock, right? Photo. And you will see, if you looked at one to two pages of Google, within two pages, for sure, if you click around, you'll see others who are quick to react. And, and we have to depend on the crowd. We have to depend on others doing the work. There are websites that are good at fact checking. Fact, like Politico is a good fact checking website. I have a few <laughs> others listed here. Eli, you know some others off the top? Yeah, but they all have a bias. They all have a bias, for sure. For sure. And by the way, Nicole Kidman, this was taken several hours before that slap for something else that happened in the Oscars, but they took it and threw it up and called it, you know, the reaction. It's all being manipulated. There's a, a, a person at a, at a rally, they said it was a Trump rally, swastikas, wasn't true, wasn't a Trump rally, it was something completely different, okay? But these things get manipulated all the time. So we have to put it to the test, you have to choose your battlefield, snopes.com, factcheck.org, politifact.com, Washington Post fact checker. These are at least a place to begin, to check and see, what am I digesting? And that, I know, with just today's, just a little bit of time, I would ask you to do the following. When you get something into one of your chats that seems to rise up any of those emotions, fear, anger, disgust, anxiety, take a moment, open up one of your web pages on another app or on your computer, or call up someone who maybe you trust, knows how to fact check, and say, can we just double check this before I forward it out, before I send it to 50 other people, okay? How can I know if this is true or not? And even if you're not sure of the answer, at least you'll see that there is a debate and a, a discussion going on around these particular facts. We have to become more conscious consumers. In order to battle the dark arts of media manipulation, we have to rise up. We have to teach our kids how to do the same. Thank you guys very Thank much. You. Uh,